Every fan of the sport knows the name Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and they should. That said, the kind of life Shelly Ann lives is quite fascinating for what can be considered the common people. Yes, I mean us. Not only do we not have the kind of fame she has, but the amount of money in her bank account as well. Shelly Ann's luxurious lifestyle is one that we can only wish to have. However, that wasn't always the case. In fact, Fraser grew up in the impoverished, violence-plagued Waterhouse District of Kingston, Jamaica. It might not look like it, but she was raised with two brothers by her mother who earned a living as an unlicensed street vendor. It was her love for the track that took them off the streets, so to speak. At 10 years old, Fraser occasionally competed in track and field events in primary school. In high school, she raced 100 meters in 11.57 seconds, which is an undeniably promising result for a 16-year-old girl. Fast forward to 2007 when she attended the University of Technology in Kingston. There, she improved her best to 11.31 seconds, placed fifth at the national championships, and earned a silver medal at the world championships for her run in the heats of the 4x100-meter relay. Still, her breakthrough didn't come until 2008 when she won gold at the Beijing Olympics. It was then that she won gold in the 100 meters with a time of 10.78 seconds. At just 5 feet 3 inches or 1.6 meters, it's just a little bit short of world record-setting sprinter Usain Bolt's time. And so, she lived up to the Pocket Rocket nickname given to her by a journalist. Pocket Rocket is befitting, don't you think? Since then, she proved to the world time and time again that her speed is rocket-like. It was in early 2017 when Fraser Price announced that she was pregnant and gave birth to a boy in the same year. Understandably, she did not return to competition until the following year. Still, even after she became a mom and went back to owning the track, Pocket Rocket simply became Mommy Rocket, and she continued to live by that name. It was funny, though, when at her child sports day at school this year, a fellow mom tried to psych her out. She shared that two weeks before the event, the other parents started sending her photos of her working out in the gym, and then she told me she was coming for me. She further shared, I was like, you can't be serious, girl. Still, the friend, whose daughter is in her son's class, insisted she wouldn't be backing down. And when we got to sports day, she even started giving me the eyes, trying to psych me out. She didn't take it seriously until her son fell in one event and came third in the obstacle race, and her husband could only finish fourth in the dad sprint. At that point, she decided enough was enough, and she had to uphold the family's honor. Well, we all have competitive sides. Really, what more can we expect from an athlete? She took things seriously enough to warm up and then, to the accompaniment of cheering kids, delivered another exhibition of speed to win by half the length of the grass track, with her friend back in second. After all, Shelly Ann is regarded as one of the greatest female sprinters of all time. So on the sports day too, she exemplified what it truly means to be and become extraordinary. It is no secret that her achievements on and off the track have helped to elevate Jamaican athletes on the international scene. As one of the most decorated world championship athletes in history, she holds 14 world championship gold medals and counting. She is the only sprinter, male or female, to win five world titles in the 100 meter. She earned it in 2009, 2013, 2015, 2019, and 2022. Of course, her career wasn't without humps and bumps. In 2010, her career was derailed after she took a positive drug test at the Shanghai Diamond League. Apparently, the sprinter had been given a painkiller by her coach Stephen Francis to treat a toothache, which contained the banned substance oxycodone. While it is not performance-enhancing or considered to be a masking agent, she had failed to declare it on her doping control form for the meeting. That's where she went wrong. Although Fraser was completely transparent about her mistake, she still received a six-month ban. After marrying Jason Price and changing her name in January 2011, she told the BBC, I'm a professional athlete, one who's supposed to set examples, so whatever it is I put in my body, it's up to me to take responsibility for it, and I have done that. She did take responsibility for the matter and more. 
the fastest woman alive has already made great strides in using her platform to focus on underprivileged youth, born of her own challenging upbringing in Jamaica. That said, Shellyann wants to leave behind a legacy when she retires from athletics. And as early as now, she's already a very visible inspiration to the next generation due to her athletic performance. But more than that, she's exemplary behind the scenes too. And rightfully so, Fraser Price is working as hard on her legacy away from the track. When I hang up my spikes, I want to know that I inspired other women and girls to go after their dreams. Hashtag legacy, she said in a tweet. On that note, it is not at all surprising to know that Fraser Price has a lifelong passion for helping underprivileged kids. Born of her own experience growing up in Waterhouse, a poor area of Jamaica's capital, Kingston, where she would run to primary school barefoot. Through the Pocket Rocket Foundation, which is obviously founded by Shelly Ann herself, it is basically a nonprofit organization dedicated to fueling the futures of student athletes and their community members so they can soar to new heights. Their mission is to enrich the lives of student athletes by supporting their educational developments and basic needs. Through the foundation, Fraser Price gives out scholarships to young Jamaicans, covering tuition, books, uniforms, travel, and lunch money. Annual renewals of scholarships are based on academic performance, since Shelly Ann is quite keen on ensuring a balance between sports and education for each student athlete, because a solid education must never be compromised by athletic involvement and competition. It is literally written on the foundation's website. Fraser Price described her own experience with a mentor and the importance it played in her life. She shared that when she started high school in 1999, she was privileged to have met a woman who saw something in her and started to fund her education, books, uniform, lunch, and everything. Now she's paying it forward, so to speak. In addition to managing her own foundation, Fraser Price was also appointed the first national ambassador for UNICEF Jamaica in 2010. In accepting the appointment, she shared, Growing up, I had dreams that I thought were out of my reach. Through my work with UNICEF, I want to help Jamaican children realize their dreams. I want to help them understand that they have rights and those rights should be protected. I want them to believe that nothing is impossible. And so, even after she's done shining on the track, she'll be working behind the scenes. But still, in a huge way, do not be mistaken about that. Speaking of which, our time to see her on the track is numbered. I definitely want 2024 to be my last hurrah. I've accomplished so much and I'm so, so grateful for it all. All the people that I've been able to touch, all the memories that I've made. After the Olympics, I want to make different memories. Speaking of the Paris Olympics, let's see if Noah Lyles is ready for it.